Hey, third graders. Remember I said, we're gonna talk a little bit about revising and editing today. So editing is when we use those letters, the cups, if you remember that, right? C-U-P-S. And we have a lesson from our earlier personal narrative unit. So you should have that in your notebook. I also included a copy of it today along with this video. So remember cups, we wanna look at capitalization, usage, punctuation, right? We wanna think about those things. That's the stuff that anybody can look at and, and see in your essay. When we revise, that's when we make it better. So I'm gonna reread mine today and I'm gonna start looking for cups, right? I said capitalization, usage, does it make sense as I read it? Does it sound like language, like a conversation? Punctuation and spelling, those red words should all be spelled correctly. So let's reread mine and I'm gonna check for capitalized letters. Okay, here's the beginning of, of a sentence. I see a capital F, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna look for, oh, there's punctuation. So that tells me my very next letter better be capitalized. There it is. I'm looking for punctuation. There it is. Here's another capital letter. I keep going, punctuation capital letter. Okay. I'm not reading out loud, am I? I'm just looking and scanning with my eyes. Because I know after the punctuation, that's the end of a sentence, the very next sentence should start with a capital letter. Remember, the letter I stands alone. That should always be capitalized, as should proper names or places. Yep, I like it. Keep looking. So far, so good. Ooh, there's an exclamation point. I like that. Capital letter. I've got some commas in here too, so a little extra punctuation. And then there's my ending mark at the very end of my paragraph. So I know all my capitals are there. Now I'm gonna read it to see, does it sound right? Does it sound like language? That's the U part, C-U-P-S. So usage, does it sound right? Okay, I've already checked my punctuation, the P part, and then I have the spelling part. So kind of as I read, I'm gonna look for spelling words as well, all right? It says, finally, it's important to know a few things when backing. Wait a minute, backing? I'm talking about baking, that's not right. Oh gosh, I need to fix that. So I don't want it to be backing, it should be baking. Heaven forbid I spell that whole word wrong. It's the whole topic, right? I changed it, I did it in red so you could see. My punctuation is right there. You always want to bring your ingredients, ingredients, in, oh my goodness, ingredients. Oh, how do I spell that? That's a hard one. In read e -ence. there we go i knew something looked wrong all right you always want to bring your ingredients to room temperature temperature i don't think that's right but i'm not sure i'm going to circle it and i'm going to put like an sp with a question mark because i'm not sure i'm going to have to go back and check that one temperature i think it look you know i think it's it sounds right but i don't know it doesn't look right to me you always want to bring your ingredients to room temperature before starting a recipe. It will cook more evenly. Preheating the oven is another good tip. I don't know. Cook. C uh, uh. Cook like look like book. I know how to spell those words. I think it might be the double O. I'm going to have to check that. I do this before. I start mixing the, in. oh, there's that word again, ingredients. I gotta fix that. Ingredients. If you're making cookies, remember not to crowd the pan. Cookies need room. So limit it to 12 per sheet. Otherwise, you'll end up with a cookie quilt. Trust me. I wonder if anybody knows. Some people in my class know why. I talk about that, right? If I say, trust me, doesn't that give you a hint that something went wrong one time? 
I, it wasn't me, but I helped Mr. Linderman with some cookies and it was a conversation on the phone. The one thing I forgot to tell him was to put 12 balls of cookie dough on the sheet. He put them all on one cookie sheet and it turned out looking like a cookie quilt. They weren't cookies. It was like one big giant cookie that looked like a quilt. So I always now remember to tell people or remember myself, well, I got to give those cookies room, right, to bake. A lot of cookies will spread out as they bake. I didn't tell him that and it became a mess. As tempting as it is to eat your food right away, letting it cool on a baking rack will help it set up and taste just the way you want it to. All right, I think that's okay. I'm wondering though, I feel like I need to say something else at the end. I just kind of stopped talking about all my tips. I kind of need to wrap it up with like a sentence at the end that reminds my reader right, what I'm talking about. These are important things to know when baking, right? Important things to know when baking. So I feel like I need to put some kind of a sentence at the end of this paragraph. So maybe something like following these simple tips. I don't know if I like the word tips, but I'm going to put that right there and then I'm going to kind of underline it so I can check. Maybe I want to change that word. Following these simple tips when baking will guarantee, guarantee, I don't know if that's spelled right. I'm going to circle that, put a question mark so I can check that. Following these simple tips when baking will guarantee, hmm, how about if I write the word success in the kitchen? Yeah, I like that. I'm going to have to check, right? Add the word tips. I don't know if I like that. Following these simple tips these simple strategies. I think of some other words for tips. And I need to check the spelling of guarantee because that's a word I'm not quite sure how to spell. I know it starts with a hard G, g, g guarantee, but I'm not sure about that. So I added a sentence. I wonder if I can go back in that paragraph and add anything else, revise it to make it sound a little bit better. I think it's important to know a few things when baking. We want to bring your ingredients to room temperature before starting a recipe, before starting, beginning, beginning a recipe. I kind of like that. I think I might do that instead. Beginning a recipe. It will cook more evenly. Preheating the oven is another good tip. Good. Hmm, it's got to be a better word than good. Is another, oh, I know helpful tip because that's what I'm trying to do right is give helpful tips I do this before I start mixing the ingredients that's true I always do this if you're making cookies remember not to crowd the pan cookies need room why do they need room they need room to spread so limit it to 12 per sheet. Otherwise, you'll end up with cookie quilt. Trust me, right? As tempting as it is to eat your food right away, letting it cool on a baking rack will help it set up and taste just the way you want it to, just the way, mm, just the way, how about it should? Because if I followed the recipe, it should turn out just the way it's supposed to, right? So today I showed you my paragraph. Right? This was my rectangle, my number three rectangle. Right? I showed you in red where I kind of changed some of those cups, right? The capitalization, punctuation, spelling, things like that. In blue, I kind of showed you how I revised. How did I make it better? How did I change some words? I added that sentence at the end to kind of tie up 
my paragraph, if you think of it as a present, you want a nice bow on it when you present it, right? Some ribbon. So I kind of added a pair or added a sentence at the end to kind of bring it all together so I could remind my reader what they were learning about. All right, today your job is to go through your essay so far and hopefully you've written at least two paragraphs, maybe even more. And you can use the checklist, the cups and the star checklist to go back and make your writing better and to fix it up.